Welcome to DETV today. I am here with Dr. Mani Golpavar, founder of Reconstruct and associate professor of civil engineering, computer science, and technology entrepreneurship at University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Welcome. I'm Cheryl Reese, the host of DETV, and looking forward to talking with you today about the role of artificial intelligence in the industry. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Glad to be able to talk, Cheryl. So, first of all, tell me a little bit about who you are and what you do at the university. Just set the stage for our listeners. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, so, as I was introduced, my name is Mani Gopavar. Um, I um, wear two different hats every day. Um, at Reconstruct, I'm co-founder and chief technology officer. Reconstruct um, is a startup company that um, came out of research we conducted at the University of Illinois. Um, and it offers a software uh, service solution for managing construction progress on job sites using visual data. At the University of Illinois, I'm an associate professor. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Um, and affiliate of the Department of Computer Science and Technology Entrepreneurship Program. So I work in a spectrum of um, research to product uh, in terms of conducting basic research in AI, applying AI techniques for construction, and developing solutions that can um, improve productivity and impact bottom line for construction companies. Okay, great. Can you tell us a little bit more about AI, artificial intelligence, make it as accessible as possible in terms of how it relate to our industry, construction, engineering, architecture. I don't think it's the first thing that comes to people's minds when they think AI. So give us sort of a sense of the intersection there. Absolutely. Um, so if you think about AI, and specifically AI in construction, it really involves the process of coming up and devising with new algorithms and methods that can learn from data, data that we have in design, data that we have in construction, adjusting to the type of new inputs that we get across various workflows that we perform, and perform project manager-like, project engineer-like tasks that we currently see in our industry. You know, construction is a very interesting industry because it produces tons of data. We have daily construction photographs. We have daily progress uh, the reports that construction companies generate. We have telematics. We have worker productivity data, name it, RFIs, um, change orders, takeoffs and estimates. And each and every one of these types of data I was mentioning is being captured in large volumes every day. Let's pick an example. Let's pick construction photographs. Um, you know, we have field engineers that are walking on job sites using their smartphones to take pictures, maybe five hundreds of you know photographs a day on average for a hundred million dollar project a day. We have professional photography service companies that are taking photos on job sites. We see fixed cameras that are taking videos and time-lapse photos every two, five minutes a day from multiple viewpoints. We see 360 cameras that are video taking job sites, drones, laser scanning. So when you think about this wealth of data we have and the potential of AI, there could be a tremendous number of use cases, creating safer job sites, improving how we do plan and scheduling our job sites, tracking progress and productivity, all the way to even autonomy in terms of how we are handling materials or performing repetitive tasks on job site. What excites AI for construction is the type of data we have in construction is on the structure. And what I mean by that is, you know, construction companies collect and use data, but sometimes they capture them using, uh, you know, manual workflows, sometimes you use digital platforms, we never, you know, host the entire data on one central repository that we can use it after the projects are really complete. So being able to collect data, being able to structure the data and standardize workflows on how we can tap into the data will be one of the most critical aspects of AI uh, for construction. Those are great examples. Thank you for sharing those. Some critics contend that the industry is behind on the curve of implementing AI. What would you say to that? Um, that is correct. Um, there are a number of reasons for that. Um, if you think about the construction industry and how contractors typically perform their work, you know, we have relatively tight budget constraints. And usually when it comes to leveraging technology, AR or not AI driven, uh, one of the challenges that we have is construction companies see that as one of the line items that go into the general conditions of the project as opposed to thinking about this as a solution that really impacts the bottom line for the owner. 
If you want to be proactive, you probably will be presenting an AI solution to the owner. Try to get their buy-in so it becomes part of your services to, um, to the owner. But typically, construction companies see that as part of their own existing workflows, and they try to tap into that very small uh, pool of uh, resources that they have that they can use for technology. So this is really one of the challenges that I always see. Second is, every technology, again, AR or not AI, requires hiring staff that can really maintain that solution, they can operate that, and make sure employees are being trained. Over the past 10 years, we've seen a surge of construction companies like Turner, DPR, just to provide examples, that have been training trainers. People are called regional, let's say, virtual design construction managers or virtual technology managers. And their job is to help with implementing and, and growing technologies. The other aspect is really the risk. There's always a risk of adopting any new technology. When it comes to larger firms, their type of risk is different from smaller firms. For larger firms, it's all about standardizing workflows and tapping into things that are more sustainable so they can grow them. For smaller ones, it's always figuring out what is best for them that they can take advantage of so they can differentiate themselves in you know this tight uh, budget constraints that we have in the industry. So again, there are various aspects that play a role in terms of making engineering and construction very unique and different from, let's say, manufacturing. Okay, that's interesting. So it sounds like really some of the greatest challenges to overcome might be around costs, schedule, and safety concerns. Would that be accurate? Yes, those are definitely um, you know some of the most important ones. You know, safety is always number one in anything we do in construction. Today, on average, unfortunately, we're losing three to four lives a day on projects that are actually on the construction in the United States. That's a really high number, and AI can actually have a substantial impact in terms of taking us from you know, the lagging indicators that we use for safety today to more leading indicators that we can proactively identify unsafe practices and prevent them. And the same is also true about cost and schedule performance. You know, there are many different types of organizations that have been putting data. Dutch Data Analytics have been doing a lot of surveys that shows more than 50% of typical construction projects in the U.S. are behind the schedule and are over budget. If you're looking to reports coming up from McKinsey and others, the number is actually higher. They show 98% of construction projects larger than half a billion dollars are over budget and they're also behind the schedule. 98%. That's a really high number. So being able to come up with strategies and tools that can take away the time-consuming task of capturing data, making sense of data, and letting our always understaffed project teams tap into the actionable insight from the data so they can manage costs, manage the schedule, and safety in a better way are some of the greatest opportunities that we have to overcome safety, costs, and schedule challenges of our industry. Right. It's really good to hear that there's such potential for AI, especially when it comes to safety and human life. Sounds definitely like a critical implementation option for the industry. What about in terms of the process of AI and implementing it? Who would you say are the stakeholders in this process? Yeah, um, I've been thinking about this a lot um, uh, from several perspectives. You know, broadly speaking, um, any AI-driven solution would impact multiple stakeholders of the construction project. So, in every project, we have owners, we have designers, we have construction contractors or construction management companies, all the way to owners, every party is going to be impacted. The party that will take most benefit from anything is always the owner. But being able to engage the owner in a more meaningful way is typically the responsibility of the contractor or designer. So everyone gets impacted by this. But in terms of parties that are really engaged in the process of bringing AI solutions, I also have to add academia. You know, in academia, especially in civil and environmental engineering, for more than a decade, we've had communities around computing in civil engineering. This community has always been looking to what are the biggest pain points that we have in industry? What are the most promising algorithms and methods that are coming out in data mining, machine learning, computer vision, and natural language processing, and figure out how we can make impact by creating better methods, better processes, better learning models that can address some of these problems that we have. So a, a true impactful AI would require everyone to be part of it, but every part is only going to be part of one step of the chain of events that needs to happen. For example, 
academia is mostly going to be involved in basic AI research. Startup companies are going to be involved in taking basic AI, applying them to construction problems. Some of the major technology companies, named Oracle, Autodesk, may be more involved in um, quick impact through some of the more readily available AI toolboxes, and they've been successful in delivering some of the solutions. And venture capital community can actually help in providing the resources that are necessary to streamline this process of taking that idea, creating prototypes, creating products that actually make an impact on the industry, and engaging all these stakeholders in every aspect. Huh. Delineating all those stakeholders is a very interesting exercise to hear them identify them and what role they would play in the process and what kind of outcome there might be. What about uh, just, I'm wondering, what, just where are, just where are the solutions beginning to emerge for AI in the construction industry? Yeah, there are a number of aspects um, you know, that have emerged in terms of practical solutions today. So, you know, sometimes, again, I wear my academic hat and think that, you know, we've been having AI solutions for a very long time in construction, starting with optimization techniques for project planning and scheduling. That's been around for maybe almost two decades now. But in terms of practical solutions that construction companies can really use today, maybe I have to only go back to five to seven years ago that we've seen a search of solutions that are coming out that automate the process of planning and scheduling, solutions that are contributing to automated detection of um, progress or quality issues. Uh, and specifically on that, to give you an example, solutions that are capturing and mapping reality of the job set in three dimensions. And lately, we're also seeing a surge of solutions that are coming out on safety, um, solutions that rely on telematics for workers, rely on sensors that could be mounted on the body of a worker or equipment, or even uh, more computer vision um, solutions that can um, automatically detect and characterize safety or defects from job site photographs. So we've talked a lot about our industry, our shared industry of construction, architecture, and engineering. But can we also talk about other industries like transportation and manufacturing and how AI is performing in those particular sectors? Yeah, that's interesting. You know, if you think about the adoption of technology and specifically AI, some of those industries have been far ahead of construction. And you know, we just touched on some of the reasons why construction has been lagging compared to others. But there's also another aspect to it. Um, a lot of tasks in manufacturing specifically are repetitive by nature. And what that means is that if you devise technology or methods that can track performance, learn from patterns of data, you can come up with strategies that you can prevent them from happening in the future. And if you implement them, given the repetitive nature of these tasks, the chances of impact are significantly larger. So I'll give you some examples of that. Think about computer vision for construction versus computer or machine vision for, uh, for manufacturing settings. Machine vision has been around for many years in manufacturing settings. We see that dominantly used for quality control or detecting defects in any products that are coming out of uh, manufacturing uh, you know, um, process plants. And it's because you can actually fix these cameras and you will have processes by which the product is moving um, along, let's say, a conveyor belt. And you'll be able to detect defects of every single object, learn from it, and prevent those instances where you've actually identified these defects. Construction is very different. Construction doesn't happen in a controlled environment like manufacturing. It always happens outside. So something that significantly distinguishes from, you know, construction from other industries. People move around, processes move around the job site as opposed to um, a fixed location where the actual product is being built is being moved around. Second is the nature of the uh, you know uh, resources that we're using in job sites. We're dealing with you know drywalls, we're dealing with asphalt, brick, cement, concrete, and all kinds of other construction materials. Um, and there are many different agencies that are involved. We don't have one group or um, a set of you know clear supply chain um, companies that are uh, supporting um, you know these development of these products or the applications that are being built around them. And last week is really the way we create contracts. You know, in construction, we have contractors and subcontractors, so we engage many uh, different firms into our processes. And the way we uh, manage risk, the way we manage contracts, 
significantly change the way we look into bringing technology or AI and making an impact. So I, I don't think it's really fair to compare construction against uh, you know, manufacturing and uh, transportation sectors, but definitely there is opportunity to learn from those industries. Right. It's a complicated ecosystem. It's interesting to hear you unpack each layer and how it relates to AI. What about uh, what AI-powered applications have you seen in other sectors that we could think about applying to the construction industry? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, um, opinions differ on you know where um, innovation and AI impact would come into construction. You know, there's a school of thought that people think that you know AI and technology solutions would definitely come into construction from outside construction. Um, I tend to think differently. I actually think that um, you know, the impact of AI and technology to construction would come in from the construction community itself. It is not like a hammer and you're looking for a nail. It's more, what are the real problems that we have in the industry? And let's look into what are the core capabilities of AI in terms of basic AI as opposed to apply AI. And then let's devise solutions that really make an impact on our own problems as opposed to taking this technology that has worked in manufacturing, bring it to construction and see if it works or not. I don't really think that's the right way of thinking about it. I like to think that, you know, we can work as a community to um, devise KPIs, key performance indicators that matter to the industry, come with the right ground truth data that matters for validation. And there are quite a few efforts like Oracle Industries Lab in Chicago that is putting together a test for these type of experiments. And then let's work in teams that we can bring solutions by startups, by academia, demonstrate impact by KPIs that actually matter, and helping them go through the transition of idea to prototype to product, as opposed to bringing something from outside that may or may not work with the culture that we have in construction or some of these challenges that we discussed earlier. Right. Important to fit. And it's important to think about it's important to think about how it's not one size fits all, but that you need a customized approach. I like that. So what are a few early stage examples in the industry that we can apply to construction? You know, you can think about this in, in, in several ways. If, if you mean, you know, what are the companies that can potentially, uh, you know, make an impact? I mean, there's a search of them. I don't want to name any specific company, but there's a range of startup companies that are coming out. And, the number of actually exceeded, uh, you know, uh, 40, 50 startups in the space of AI for design and construction. There's also a search of uh, products that are AI driven. Um, so I don't, I don't think this is really limited to early stage companies. Um, pick Autodesk, pick Oracle, pick Bentley, and you know other advanced technology companies. They've all been coming up with AI driven solutions that are really these teams within these large organizations that are really being treated as startups. And every single one of them is coming up with a really cool solution. You can pick solutions like construction and IQ from Autodesk to, you know, startup companies like Reconstruct that I happen to be involved in in, in, in I've been making you know, contributions there to other solutions like Triax, Trovix. Um, and there are really good efforts in the industry level to show the value or evaluate the impact of these early stage companies. One great example of that is really what Oracle started almost, I think about a year and a half, two years ago, with Oracle Industries Lab. And the idea is that there's a you know, large number of construction companies and a decent number of partners, technology providers, that are coming together in this live construction lab where solutions can be tested with KPIs that really matter and showing the potential impact that every one of the solutions have. So you have a safe environment where you can do your testing see really the impact without engaging your project teams, without you know, having to tap into your budget immediately, but again, being part of this ecosystem and contributing your resources and participating in the lab activities is one of those opportunities uh, for making e evaluation on early stage companies. Does this answer your question, Cheryl? Yes, yes, it does. Very helpful. Thank you. So I know no one has a crystal ball and can see into the future, but when people think about AI, they immediately often will think about jobs and workforce. So my question next to you is, how do you see AI affecting the jobs and workforce in the industry? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, 
you know, maybe I should be coding um, other people on this. So maybe I can quote um, Andrew Alagnos, uh, CEO of Autodesk. Um, I remember a few years ago, I was at Autodesk University, and he was delivering the uh, keynote speech um, on the same topic. You know, would AI automation affect jobs or workforce in the construction industry? And I remember clearly um, that he said, you know, um, the future of automation would be kick-starting jobs. It would help start new jobs. It would not be killing them. You know, and that's really true. Um, the demand for more buildings, infrastructure, and product is growing by the day. If you look into the forecasts that we see from McKinsey and others, there's going to be a tremendous number of civil infrastructure systems that need to be built. In the existing ones, we have to come up with strategies that we can prioritize rehabilitation of them and working on improving existing conditions. So there's a tremendous amount of work that needs to be done. So if you think about where we are in the industry, what kind of resources we have, and the amount of job that is in front of us, we need to come up with strategies that we can address the needs for automation. If you go outside the U.S., the problem can actually be quite significant. Pick the country of Japan. That's actually a country that my company is very heavily engaged in. You know, the workforce is aging in Japan, and there's a desire for bringing solutions that can complement existing workforce, take away some of the more unskilled jobs, automate them through AI-driven solutions, and have... Uh, field engineers, uh, field managers, project managers really focus on value-adding activities. Yeah, so it is true that automation may get some of the unskilled jobs, but that doesn't mean that there will be a shortage of work. I think it's quite the opposite. It's going to be a tremendous amount of work, but the nature of work is likely going to change. Um, you know, when you think about these automation solutions, um, we will be needing people who can actually create these solutions. We will be needing people who can make sense of actionable insight that comes out of them. And we will be needing people who can operate and maintain these robotic solutions that some of them will be AI-driven too. So I see this as more of an opportunity to um, go from where we are today into um, a, a, a more advanced industry that we can um, do things more productive way. At the same time, transform our jobs so they're more attractive to the next generation that we can you know, attract to the industry. If you think about what American Society of Civil Engineers have been advocating, one of the biggest challenges of our 21st century is you know, attracting um, students and skilled workforce to go to the construction industry. It is deemed as unsafe, it is deemed as unproductive, so actually tapping to AI and automation can change the perception of people to construction. And good to hear it's not as simple as an increase in AI is going to result in a decrease in jobs. It's a lot more nuanced than that, and there might be impacts on some jobs, but there might be a creation of jobs in others. What about in terms of AI and the fact that we're hearing more and more about it in the news every day? What can industry leaders do to stay ahead of the AI curve? Yeah, so, um, you know, again, there are... Um, several stages um, that I see um, we will be needing, um, you know, executives from every construction company to be engaged in. There are stages of understanding what is um, useful today that they can bring into their companies, what is the value that each technology-driven workflow that, you know, can make an impact on the projects and processes, what are the more long-term investment that they have to make, and what they have to be looking out for in terms of how their business processes will evolve over the years. So, um, you know, there's a range of events that I think every executive should be engaged in. There are, you know, academic conferences that more establish the long-term vision of AI impact. There are industry events, um, like the ones that you guys are working on, um, other venues that are happening in the US and around the world that educate um, executives on what are the, you know, um, more practical solutions that can be used today. Um, so, you know, it gives them both perspectives of long-term and short-term AI impact. Being engaged in these initiatives that contribute to the test bed, um, helping some of the project teams take initiatives and have internal entrepreneurial workflows within the organization that can take advantage of AI solutions per project, and sharing data. I think sharing data is actually another important aspect. I'd love to see construction companies come together, share data in forms of, you know, industry-led initiatives or academia-led initiatives um, to make the ecosystem better. 
Data sharing sounds like it holds a lot of promise and potential. Thank you for sharing your insights and your expertise today, Dr. Golpavar. It's been really nice to talk with you. And Thank you very much for the opportunity, Cheryl. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us today. And as the host of DETV, again, I'm Cheryl Reese. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.